In this video, I'm going to be talking about three super easy ways to cut out objects in Photoshop. And for anyone who's used Photoshop for quite a while knows that you do spend quite a lot of time cutting out certain objects so that you can apply them on certain layers. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to first talk about the object selection tool, which is available in newer versions of Photoshop. And the idea of this is that you just select an area and Photoshop will detect edges and pretty much attempt to select the object boundaries for you. And so it's kind of like an automatic way of cutting out objects. So before we give this a try, I've got a few tips about how to make it easier for Photoshop to actually detect what to cut out. Firstly, you want quite a large image, something that's at least 1K, 2K, 3K. The higher the resolution, the more pixels we're dealing with, which will allow Photoshop to process it better. The stock photo I'm using is 800 width by 1200 height. So it's not a massive image, but it's enough to go on for now. The other thing is that you want an image that has quite good contrast to it because it allows Photoshop to easily differentiate between the shades of pixels. As you can see here, this is quite a stylized photo, so it doesn't have amazing contrast for now. But what you could do is you can temporarily change the contrast to give it more contrast, and then you can always change it later if you want to do some color correction. So what you can do is go to Adjustments, Brightness and Contrast, click Use Legacy, and then just up the contrast to where you want. In terms of the brightness, you don't really have to worry about this too much unless you do actually want to just increase the brightness if it is actually quite a dark image. But for this, we just want to concentrate on contrast. And as you can see, it's already becoming much easier to even see a difference between the background and the foreground. Another thing about this image is that it does have depth of field naturally on the camera. So the background is blurred, whereas the foreground is sharp. And so this is also going to really help because it's quite easy to tell what is what here. So it's time to select our tool and then we just drag it over the model and it will take a few seconds to process and then it will give you a preliminary outline of what it thinks the object is. So as you can see here, it's actually done a very good job. You can see already that it has pretty much matched most of the edges. The things you'll find that it hasn't done so well are things where it is naturally quite similar colors to the background. And this is kind of what you'd expect. And so what you'll often find, unless it's a really high contrast image with a completely different color background, is that you will have to do a bit of tinkering when this happens. But it is a great way to get started when you're cutting something out. So if you want to adjust the mask a bit more, you just go select and mask and it will launch a new type of window. And you can see that it's already showing you a preview of what it considers to be the area it's already cut out. And this makes it even better to actually cut out the foreground than it was before. There are also a bunch of different features on the right hand side. I won't go into all of these because they're quite self-explanatory, but essentially what you want to do is you want to just actually just paint over the areas that have been missed. So I'm just going to paint over this lapel area here. And it has now counted it as part of the foreground. So it's literally as simple as that. You're not actually really using the mask tool like it is normally. You're just kind of painting. There is a bit on the earring here. And what you can also do is if it's a bit difficult to tell what's being cut out and what hasn't, you can adjust the transparency of the preview of the transparent background because sometimes even with this view, it is a little bit tricky to tell what's already been cut out. So I'm not going to go over this too much because most of the job is already done. Uh, there's a bit here with the finger, a bit of the collar, a few bits of things going on over here, but I don't think we have to worry about it too much. So just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to consider this part done. So I'm going to press OK. And now we will have the updated mask layer here to cut out. And so if I was to just press delete or backspace, 
Of course, it's going to delete my actual model, the forefront I want to essentially keep. I mean, you may want to cut out the full model, but mostly you'd want to actually cut out the background. So I'm just going to do Control and Z and undo that. So as an additional step, it's super easy to actually essentially reverse what you're cutting out. You just have to go to select, and then there is the inverse. You can do this anytime you're kind of selecting stuff to cut out. It doesn't have to be with this tool. You can use it pretty much whenever. It should always give you the option to invert what you just did. And now you can see that it has selected the background. So I can go ahead and delete that. Voila, brilliant. It's all done. What you can do here is you can then apply separate versions of it. So I can go back here and you know there are some gaps between the arm here where there's still a bit of background. And because we were cutting out the outside, it didn't really get a chance to actually you know, detect this bit. And I would assume it would actually be quite easy to detect this. So if I select this, it should, yeah, it should detect this pretty easily. There are little bits here where it hasn't quite done it, but yeah, it should be pretty easy to actually cut out the bits inside here. So I can go ahead and do this. So you pretty much get the idea. And I would say that this isn't really a tool to automate cutting out because it's still you still need to add some kind of manual craft and a bit of skill. But I would say if you're someone who cuts stuff out regularly, it's a great way to just get a good head start. The next tool we're gonna to look at is the quick selection tool, which is in the same collection here. And it is simply just a brush that detects areas around it. And it just allows you to select stuff by essentially kind of coloring it in. And it's pretty easy to use. There are versions of this tool in programs like After Effects. So you may have used it kind of like roto paint brushes. I guess that's essentially what this is. At the top here, you have typical kind of brush stroke options here. So this is pretty much just the same thing as you'd have with normal brushes. It then has more options in terms of like negative space and what you can actually do with the brush. But yeah, it is very simple. So I'm going to go ahead and start cutting it out. So it is pretty good at detecting the areas. And as you can see here, I've kind of spilled out. So I would want to go to my negative brush and I want to dab away that. So like I said, very similar to other Roto brush type tools. And I think for this particular bit, where it may be more difficult for Photoshop to actually sense where the edge is, you'd probably want to have a, a smaller tool so it's not doing such a big wide area. For the third and final tool, it's not actually in this selection because it just has the normal magic wand. It's actually in the lasso section, which should be next to it depending on how your toolbar is set up. But it's this thing here, which is the magnetic lasso tool, which is also a fairly new tool to use. And kind of like the brush roto type tool, it uses a similar thing where you would essentially do what you normally would in terms of just highlighting areas around an object such as this. And I'm not actually clicking, by the way, I'm not clicking to make those points. I'm actually just dragging it around just like this and it automatically adds the points for you. So it's a similar kind of deal in that it will try to detect stuff as much as possible. So rather than kind of filling in the area with the brush, you would just kind of go around the edge. And then when you're ready, you would go back around and click to make your actual selection. I'm just gonna deselect that. With this one, it's really important to get the actual settings right, depending on the picture. So I wanna go back up here and the feather, kind of like whenever you use a kind of selection, it's just kind of feathering how much of the area is actually cut out straight, or if there's like a bit of a buffer, like a kind of, a, I guess like a blur or like a bit of a fade off. But for this, considering we're just cutting it out straight, you'd want to just cut that at zero. For the width, this is basically dependent on the area kind of around your cursor. So essentially, if you have an object that's really clearly different to the background, you'd want to put quite a large width because you don't have to make such precise movements with it. For the contrast, you're putting a percentage of change between the contrast of two pixels essentially around the edge that is required to make a path. As with width, 10% is a pretty good value to go with, which is the default value. For frequency, this is essentially just the amount of dots that there are on your path with the lasso. The default is 57, and this is actually a pretty good value as well to use. For more complicated objects, you may wanna up this, but it, it kinda of just depends on the picture, but just for the sake of showing for 99 there, 
and you get a load of dots here. So there you go, three super easy ways to maximize selecting and cutting out objects in Photoshop. If you found this tutorial useful, please leave me a like and subscribe. And of course, if you're stuck on anything and want to request a tutorial, please leave me a comment. I read them all and I'm happy to help out. All right, I'll see you in the next video.